In this video, I'll be showcasing my top five choices for the best Python IDE and text editors. Now, all of these choices have their different pros and their different cons and different use cases for them. So that means that for me, my favorite may not be yours. And in that instance, I'd love to see a comment down below, maybe explaining why you disagree with me or why you think one of the editors on my list should be ranked somewhere else. Now, before we go too far, I will quickly mention the difference between an IDE and a text editor, as that is important. An IDE stands for an integrated development environment. And essentially what that means is this is a much more feature rich software tool. It comes with things like a debugger and autocomplete and is a much heavier package with a lot more features. What that also means is it's going to use more memory on your computer. It's going to be more system intensive. It may be lag. It may crash sometimes. And on slower computers, it's maybe not the best option. Whereas a text editor is a lighter weight version of this. It comes with less features. Typically, it'll have some plugins that you can install. And really, all it's meant for is some basic scripting and some lighter weight coding and is a great option when you don't have a very capable computer that can run one of these huge IDEs. So with that being said, there is one commonality between all of these things, and that is that they are all compatible with the sponsor of today's video, which is Kite. Now, Kite is the best Python autocomplete engine on the market and will help you save tons of keystrokes while you're programming. It runs a deep learning model on your computer while you type to show you the best and most relevant completions for your Python code. It's capable of completing entire lines and has a feature called intelligent snippets that will help you fill in arguments and method calls with the variables you've defined earlier. It also comes with a companion coding window called Copilot. The Copilot window shows you relevant documentation while you type based on your cursor location. Now, the best part of Kite is that it's free and you can download it from the link in the description. So coming in as my fifth favorite editor for Python, we have Vim. Now, Vim is an extremely lightweight editor that becomes very powerful when you know how to use it properly. It works on pretty much every operating system and is even capable of running solely in the command line. Vim is what many Python experts use because of its powerful keyboard shortcuts and unlimited customizability. And most Vim users love how quickly they can develop with it and just the vast amount of plugins that come with it. I will warn you though that Vim has a very, very steep learning curve. It's nothing compared to modern day IDEs and it will likely take you a very long time to get used to the lack of UI features and even just remember the sheer volume of keyboard commands and shortcuts. So in conclusion, Vim is a very powerful tool and the only development environment that you'll ever need for Python, assuming that you can figure out how to use it. It's not for everyone. I wouldn't recommend it for beginners, but it's definitely something worth checking out, especially if you've been developing in Python for a long time. And now for my fourth pick, we have Atom. Atom is a sleek, modern, lightweight editor that is many Python developers tool of choice. It was developed by GitHub and contains many plugins that allow for IDE like features to be added. Of course, its integration with GitHub and Git is amazing. It's free, it's very easy to set up and get working, and in my experience, it requires the least amount of setup for any IDE or text editor. The UI is pretty nice and it's not too overwhelming, and it doesn't use many system resources on its default settings. Atom is designed to be hackable, which means you can customize almost everything about it, and it comes with a suite of optional plugins. Although do be wary as many users do report lag with too many packages or plugins installed. Atom is the editor I like to suggest to beginners and anyone looking for something that just works right out of the box. It's a great choice and I don't think you'll have any complaints using it unless you want some features like a debugger which won't come with anything other than a heavier weight IDE. And now for the first IDE in our list coming in at number three we have VS Code. Now VS Code is maintained by Microsoft which means it's constantly getting a ton of new features and exciting additions and it's actually pretty new to the market being released in just 2016. It's known to be on the lighter side when comparing it against other IDEs, although it is still sometimes slow. And of course, it comes with all the features you'd expect, like a debugger. A massive advantage to using VS Code is a built-in compiler and interpreter and compatibility with pretty much every single programming language. A lot of people prefer VS Code for web development and heavier weight projects. And the user interface, I would say, is pretty nice, although some people may argue that it's a little bit overcrowded. So this is actually where one of my favorite features of the tool comes in called Zen Mode. Now Zen Mode allows you to turn your full blown IDE into a minimalist editor with a click of a button. The only minor inconvenience when using VS Code is that Python is not one of the default languages that comes with it. This means you'll need to install it first before being able to run and use your Python code. Overall, it's hard to find an editor that's much better than VS Code when it comes to features, and my only complaint is sometimes the speed, and that can be a little bit less intuitive to get used to compared to some of the other options on our list. And now for my number two pick, we have Sublime Text. 
Subline Text is a lightweight editor that I personally love to use for smaller projects and some lighter weight scripting. The UI is simple and minimalistic, and I find it very intuitive and easy to get used to. As Subline Text is very lightweight, it's extremely fast, and it's unlikely you'll run into many issues with it. However, to get the most out of Subline, you'll need to use one of its features called Package Control to install some plugins. This allows you to pick the exact features and add-ons you want, and not be distracted by the ones you don't use or the ones you don't need. This does mean that this edit editor takes a little bit of time to get set up, but I find that it's definitely a worthwhile investment. Opening new files and looking through folders is very fast and easy, and can be enhanced even more with the right plugins. Overall, Subline is a great choice for anyone not doing anything too crazy that just wants a lightweight editor. If you're willing to spend some time installing plugins, you'll have an editor that has all the tools you want and only those. It's my personal go-to for most of my Python programming. And as I'm sure you all have guessed, coming in at number one, we have PyCharm. Now PyCharm is an IDE designed specifically for Python development. Although it is compatible with other languages, it's very powerful for working with Python code and different Python modules and frameworks like Django. It includes PEP8 style recommendations, on-the-fly coding verification, and seamless integration with Anaconda and other version control systems. It has very similar features to VS Code with a very capable debugger and, of course, the ability to install plugins and packages. It has great features for connecting to databases and servers, and the only real downfall to PyCharm is that it's a very heavyweight IDE. Compared to VS Code and some of the other things we've talked about previously, it uses a lot of system resources and oftentimes will stall on loading while it's indexing files. Now there is ways around this, but as a beginner that's something that's annoying and something that I struggled with for a while when using PyCharm. Now it is worth noting that PyCharm does have a free community version which is very capable, but also includes a professional version that has even more features but for a pretty hefty price. So overall, PyCharm is my go-to for large Python projects, especially ones using web frameworks or handling database connectivity, and it does have a slight learning curve for beginners, but it's definitely something I recommend to all Python developers to at least give a shot. So that has been my list for the top Python IDEs and text editors. Do you agree with me? Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you guys in another YouTube video.